So I want to talk to you all about how the model of organs can be used to make better electronics. But first, it's important to understand that electronics are some of the most complex, energy-intensive things that we make. And most of that energy, the energy that is three orders of magnitude greater, for example, than to make a kilogram of wood to make a kilogram of laptop, most of that energy goes into informing that laptop, informing the order of the molecules within that laptop. You can't get it back just by grinding it up in China or somewhere and melting it down. Doing that is sort of like buying sausage and trying to make a pig out of it. It just doesn't work, right? <laughs> so we have to figure out some other way. Luckily, we can rebuild organisms. We can sort of swap out parts. Some of you may have replacement kidneys or replacement heart parts even that you may have gotten from cadavers or from friends or from strangers that donated those parts to you. And if we can have this same modularity as nature has, in our products, we might be able to have some new, more flexible system. A better framework like this would allow for modular, hackable, and open components that could be reconfigured into a variety of different devices. One such framework that I'm proposing is SSG, or Skin Skeleton Guts. So, to start with guts. Nature is really great with guts. Nature uses the same guts over and over again. In this case, a pig heart and a rat heart basically scaled down versions of the same thing. The same design used throughout all mammals. And it works great. And if we could have the same modules used throughout lots of electronics, in this case, Liquidware's Arduino line, and on the left, the BeagleBoard processor, which is actually a Linux computer that has interchangeable modules for screen and touch and battery, we would be able to remix parts into different configurations. With the skeleton, nature's skeletons bend and deform and dislocate, but they don't break very often. This looks like a real disaster, but you'd be able to pop that pinky back into place and you'd probably be pretty good in mm, maybe a month. If we could build bone or skeletal components, like the skeleton that gives this watch its shape, that's 3D modeled up there, that can bang against something. It doesn't have screws, it doesn't have glue, it doesn't have small parts that can break. It also makes it much more easy to fabricate in a low-tech environment. Finally, nature uses skin for aesthetics, but also for function. So skin keeps out dust, it keeps out water, it allows us to support things on our bones. It'd be pretty hard to hold a backpack up with just your rib cage. <laughs> so skin is great, and it looks beautiful. Similarly, in a skin like this one on this SSG phone prototype, the skin not only holds the bones together, and so those are just simple printed polycarbonate uh, components that are enclosing the guts, it holds them, it contains them, it keeps them together, but it also allows for buttons on the surface that are pressable, even though they're just drawn on, because there's a capacitive sensor in the guts layer that allows them to be sensible. If we can have this sort of system, the guts from a phone on the left might be contributed later to the guts for an e-reader on the right. We would be able to conserve the energy that went into informing that matter. We would be able to sort of reduce the cloud in that original slide that, that's basically going out the door as waste. If we can have a system like this, we would be able to have much reduced wasted energy. We'd be able to extend useful life because we could upgrade our products rather than throwing the whole thing away. And we'd be able to more easily customize products for our personal niches. Most importantly, though, we would open access to as many innovators as could access these files online because now they're open, they're remixable. You could have a community as rich as the DJ community for electronics. Thank you very much. <laughs>
IBM is all about innovation, not just the innovation we do within the company, but the innovation we, we, we work with other people and organizations to do. TED Fellows really encourages that, encourages people to take their ideas and actually execute in it. And that's a great marriage to be able to drive the next wave of change and advancement. At TED Global, we have a demonstration called Edison, which is about the smart and intelligent generation of energy. The future of how energy would be produced and consumed by sources such as conventional power generation plants, solar energy, renewable sources of energy, wind, and new consumers of energy such as electric cars. Solving the key problems that affect society today require a different way of thinking and a different way of coming up with solutions. IBM's initiative around Smarter Planet is looking at the biggest problems we have, water, infrastructure, medicine, etc. And TED is providing a venue to get all the thinkers of the world together. And working with IBM, I think we can bring both communities together to really reach that global forum.